If you've paid any attention at all to my set, you've noticed these guys back here. They're from a project I've been running over on Tumblr called The New 151. It all began on Pokemon Day 2016, Pokemon's 20th anniversary. I wanted a way to honor that history and to have some fun, so I got together with a longtime friend of mine, Infinipede, to design new versions of every Gen 1 Pokemon. The idea was to take the original concepts and reimagine them or update them in line with some of the more recent Pokemon creature design trends. If you've been watching my creature design review series, you know what I'm talking about. We also wanted to make them just more interesting generally. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we revised the designs of the original starters. So we'll begin, of course, with Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. They were a bit tough, in part because the original designs are pretty solid, but also because their concepts aren't too clear. Physically, they're sort of dino frogs, and we took them more in the dino direction and made them less pudgy. Remember this was 2016? If we'd seen that Let's Go footage back then, we might have done things differently. But in terms of the actual creature concept as a whole, they're really just visual puns. Their Japanese names are all plays on strange grass, which I'm sure is hilarious in Japanese, but it's not a lot to go on. So instead we pulled from the Bulb, Ivy, and Venus parts of the English names. Bulbasaur's bulbs are based on a young Venus flytrap and the seed pouches of Ivy. Ivysaur has actual Ivy vines and a more mature Venus flytrap that's styled to look like the sail of some dinosaurs. And Venusaur opens its massive Venus flytrap and also gets some Venus flytrap flowers. Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard are in kind of the opposite situation where their concept is pretty straightforward, but their designs are not as strong. They're based on the mythical salamander, which is a fire elemental that's usually depicted as a lizard, and the basic fire-breathing western dragon. But OG Charmander doesn't have much mandered to it, so we gave it this orange and black pattern that's inspired by the spotted salamander and removed its claws. Charmeleon is mostly a sort of transitional form, not quite a dragon yet, but not quite a salamander anymore either. We did give it a chameleon-esque head crest, but that was sort of just because. Charizard is a sort of cross between the three Charizard forms. It's got the wings of standard Charizard, the legs and tail of Mega Y, and the upper body of Mega X. When Game Freak have already redesigned a Pokemon twice, that's a pretty good place to pull from for an update. I'm actually very happy with this Charizard, and um, I'm really excited because the uh, DM in the Dungeons & Dragoners campaign that I'm playing has told me that she's gonna let my character Isaac get one of these! But the starter line I'm happiest with is the Squirtle line. For the other ones, mostly I came up with the ideas and Infinipede gave me some feedback, but for this one, they basically gave me all of the good ideas. The seed of this one came from War Turtle's design and Pokedex entry. They clearly reference the Minogame, the turtle that is 10,000 years old and has seaweed growing on its back. So we used that idea of age and gave them increasing amounts of white seaweed hair. The red and yellow stripes are based on the red-eared slider and also kind of look like war paint. We gave War Turtle that single cannon both to play up the War Turtle and to make a transition between Squirtle with none and Blastoise with two. And Blastoise's design also takes some elements from Mega Blastoise. I hope you enjoyed this little overview of the new N51. Let me know in the comments below whether you enjoyed these redesigns and if you want to see me talk about more of them. There's a lot there and lots more to come, so I haven't quite decided if I'm going to cover every single one or not. And if you did like these designs, you can check out our Tumblr for the whole thing. We've done up to Machop, and the Bellsprout line should be out pretty soon. Uh, anyway, the link's in the doobly-doo. You should also check out Infinipede's other art. A link to their Twitter is down below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're new. I'm Umbreon Libris, and I'll see you in the next chapter.